Well, here I am. Here I am again with you for my suite at the Hotel de Camp in some distant place, far, far away from you, as far away from you as I can get. Have you ever looked at a picture of Easter Island from the air? They're 2,300 miles off the uh, coast of Chile, Easter Island, you know, where they have the big heads, big stone heads. Well, I got to thinking about it. I don't know, what would that look like from the satellite view? So I looked it up on the satellite. On the satellite view. And uh, it's just this little island. It's not very, it's not real small. I mean, but it's, it's pretty small. <laughs> it's out in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> and they say Hawaii was, is one of the most isolated chain of islands in the world. But I think, I think Easter Island's got them beat. <clears throat> what, what the hell is going, is, is going on there anyway? Got these big, huge stone hands heads that would be very difficult to make today, and they're quarried there on the island. And they haul these stones and set them up in rows and stuff, I and mean, it's the same, and it's the same face, this kind of guy with hardly any head, you know, I mean, above his eyebrows, a little flat head, real long faces, like just repeatedly, like a thousand of them or something like that. So I thought, I got to take a look at this place from the satellite view. What's a satellite view? What do you want? Oh, he hears me talking. He hears me talking. He wants to get. In the, he wants to get in the act. This is my dog Hudson. Anyway, so I look it up on the satellite view, Easter Island, and uh, at first it looks like there looks like there's nothing there. You had, you know, so you got to zoom in close and you see some kind of what look like white dots. And you can look this up on your computer when, when you're through. Or look it up right now if you can get that going without cutting my video off. There's nothing but these little white dots. And you zoom in on the dots and they're rooftops. You see there's some rooftops. But just kind of, you know, one part of the island. There's a few scattered ones around the island besides that. But... Just in this one little spot, I mean, I'm looking for a name and it's of the town or whatever it is on Easter Island, you know, and uh, I can't find it. I found the airport. There's like one plane there and I can't find it where, where they're bringing in their boats. Completely, it's, it's got to be the most isolated place in the world. And they're making these crazy stone hands and what the hell is going on there? I don't know. Check it out. It's pretty interesting. Well, see, I've been going about three minutes now. Um, this is a real odd time of the year for me. It seems like about this time, mid-August, August 14th, it sticks out in my mind because that's my eldest son's birthday. 1988, and uh, I was walking under the wires out there in the Flowery Hills uh, in Nevada, southeast of Reno, Flowery Hills, the kind of desert country. Walking out through the desert, and this on August 14th, and uh, I look overhead and I'm walking under some big old power lines going up to Reno, I guess. From where, I don't know. Maybe from Tahoe. It's, but Tahoe's not between Reno and... Oh, Car it must be Carson City. The, li the line between Carson City and Reno. This is probably coming out of Tahoe. Where do they get their power on there? Anyway, walking under these power lines and then suddenly I get this idea for a magnetic lens. And this magnetic lens, an electromagnetic lens, 
would be like a portal because it would bend gravitational bend gravitational space time. What do they call it? Time dilation? Gra gravitational time dilation? Yeah, so you affect the electric field, you can affect time and gravity, and it's like a, and create what could be like a wormhole and really zoom in on things. An electromagnetic microscope to the universe. What I'm talking about. Oh, that's a pretty cool idea. Well, when I get back, it turns out the lights had gone out. While I was walking under the power line, dreaming up this thing on my son's birthday, the lights go, the power goes out between Reno and Carson. It's like a blackout. So this is kind of an odd time of the year for me, and, and kind of paranormal kind of stuff happens. Coincidental stuff like yesterday. I posted a, my uh, super molecular vaccine for the measles, mumps, and other diseases on the, my journal, the John Bennett Journal. And I woke up this morning, that was last night, I woke up this morning, 13 of my followers on, Twi on my Twitter account had ditched me. Lost 13 followers. That's never happened before. Right when I just saw, just uh, coincidental with me posting my column on the, uh, my latest column on the super molecular vaccine. And uh, it's inoculating effects on the mumps, measles, rubella, other diseases like that was being posted. Coincidental with that. Is that a coincidence? Or did the, and what's weird too is that I was up. 13 followers and after I posted that column I lost 13 followers like what's that's weird and then to make it even weirder this morning I went up to the news that Dr. Peter Fisher the world's top homeopath got hit by a truck and died got run over by a truck I thought oh my god do you think that maybe he read my column and it got him so upset that he wasn't paying attention and got hit and run over by a truck? I mean, it's terrible. He's like the, the top homeopath. I mean, I don't mean to may, be making light of this or anything, but it's just a weird coincidence. It's got me thinking, God, maybe he read that column and went back and read that column again. You know, it's the super molecular vaccine super molecular inoc inoculation of measles, mumps, rubella, cancer, and other diseases, you know, whatever disease you want to come up with. There's a super molecular vaccine for it. A vaccine's a, actually an 18th century word, and during it doesn't apply. Prophylaxis, super molecular prophylaxis. That's what that is. I mean, this is really heretical. You know, I, I'm, it's like, I'm in my... Am I going to be burned at the witch, burned at the stake as a witch for posting this information? I mean, it's got me really, I'm terrified. I'm so terrified that I can't sleep at night. I've just become a bundle of I've become neurotic. I think I've become neurotic over this. But, you know, the problem is with that is that uh, I'm not a very good physician. And if I'm neurotic, then I wouldn't believe it. So maybe I'm not. Well, anyway, um, you might want to check back in, keep me posted, so to speak. <laughs>